All right, 10 lessons that my 18 year old self needed to hear. Let's get straight into it. Starting off with number one, education is everything. If you're anything like my younger self, you used to think that after formal education or university or whatever, that marked the end of your education. That was it. Unfortunately, if this is the case, it means you become stagnant after your formal education. You'll make no new progress in new domains of life. You simply don't know what you don't know. All the growth and change that I've seen in my life over the last two years have been a direct result of information. From watching YouTube videos, listening to podcasts, buying courses, investing in digital products, everything you name it. I've taken the leap of faith to invest in myself. I'm constantly searching for new ways to expand my knowledge and look for areas that I can grow and improve on. Because one of the best parts about investing in your skills and your knowledge is it's one of the few things in life that can't be taken away from you. All right, lesson number two, health comes first. I used to massively neglect my health. I'd maybe go to the gym once a week, but I'd eat so much processed food. I used to have ridiculous amounts of energy drinks every day. My sleep was terrible. I'll often do all nighters. But in recent years, I've realized that your health is really the number one pillar of your life. Without your health, you're going to massively struggle to show up in life for those you care about and to make any real progress towards your goals. In more practical terms, when my sleep, my training and my diet are all dialed in, I find that my focus and alertness throughout the day is exponentially better. I procrastinate less, I'm more locked into the task that I'm doing, everything just becomes clearer. I'd have to say that one of the biggest levers to pull regarding your health is definitely sleep. Sleep is so often overlooked by this generation. It plays such a crucial role in not only your physical recovery, but also your mentality, your emotional regulation, your ability to deal with difficult situations throughout the day. All of that is improved when you get enough sleep. Just on that note of enough sleep, if any of you have ever tracked your sleep with something like a whoop band, you'll very quickly realize that you're actually getting much less sleep than what you initially thought. Because the time that you spend in bed is not the same as the amount of hours spent asleep and recovering. Last thing about health that I've found to be quite beneficial with regards to focus is intermittent fasting. I'm not going to go into any detail now, but definitely something I would recommend to a lot of people if they're struggling with focus and concentration is try being completely fasted during periods of deep work. You have a lot less brain fog and lots more clarity when you're not digesting food in your stomach. Because it makes sense, when your body is trying to digest something, it has to divert more blood flow to your digestion which unfortunately takes away from your concentration. All right, moving on to lesson number three. Working hard is a skill. I used to be able to stay focused on one task for maybe 15, 20 minutes tops before I'd start checking my phone, get distracted, walk off, go to the bathroom, grab a coffee, whatever it is. But over the last 18 months to two years, I've really started knuckling down and improving my ability to stay focused on a single task for long periods of time. The same way you can progressively overload in the gym, I believe you can progressively overload your ability to focus and stay concentrated, or more specifically, the amount of time that you can remain in a flow state. On weekends, I can often find that I'm able to stay focused on a single task, often video editing, for upwards of six hours. And one of the ways that I'm able to do this is, again, by staying fasted. Definitely has been a big game changer for me. All right, moving on to lesson number four. We've all heard it, but failure is just a step towards success. It can often be quite discouraging when we're working really hard, spending countless hours working towards a goal. And not only do we see no progress, but we continuously find ourselves failing over and over, whatever that might be. 
But the thing that we need to realize is that each of those failures provide small lessons and learning insights into how to better improve for the next attempt. I've definitely noticed this play out in my life regarding the various business models that I've tried, attempted, and miserably failed at. Although on the surface, it looks like nothing came of it and it was a complete waste of time. In careful reflection afterwards, I've realized that I've actually picked up lots of small skills and learning lessons throughout each of the different businesses that I've tried. Everything from running ads to building a website to understanding how sales funnels work. And so all these things, they kind of just build on top of each other. And as long as you don't quit, eventually something will click. You'll have enough skills and enough resources to overcome the problems and the obstacles that come up in your next goal or business or whatever it might be. All right, moving on to number five, goal obsession. We're almost always told that we need to be balanced, we need a work-life balance, that we shouldn't be too focused or too obsessed on any one thing, but I big time disagree with that. If you are looking to achieve exceptional results in any domain of life, it's going to require some periods of time of imbalance. All your attention is devoted to this one activity, whether it's fitness or business or whatever it might be, the aim should be that the other areas of your life go on a kind of maintenance block where you don't want them to digress, but they're just not a priority at the moment. So if you're in a period of your life where you're trying to go all in with a business, then it's going to require you to sacrifice aspects of your social life, of your family, of potentially your health, the aim is to not let them go back in progress, but to just keep them where they are, do the minimum required to hold on to what you have while diverting 95% of your attention to this one goal. Okay, moving on to number six, books hold the answers. I seriously wish I started reading earlier. I get it, books aren't as interesting and aren't as engaging as playing video games, for example. But when you truly grasp the concept that everything you could possibly want to learn is out there in books, that there's people who have poured their entire life's work into one book and it's at your disposal for $15, there's just seriously no excuse to lack information nowadays. Books are, in my opinion, the best and most cost-effective way to broaden your horizons and increase your overall understanding and intellect on various topics and domains. Okay, moving on to lesson number eight, periodization. You simply can't focus on everything. So this is similar to what I was talking about with obsession, but if you're anything like me, you probably have a surplus of goals. You might have some fitness goals, business goals, relationship goals, whatever it might be. The problem with having heaps and heaps of different goals is that if you try and chase all of them, you'll reach none of them. You're much better off narrowing your attention to maybe one or two of those goals and going all in with those. And as hard as it might be, putting those other goals that you also want to achieve, but just putting them into the closet for the minute. There's a fantastic book that really dives deep into this called The One Thing. I massively recommend this book. It just perfectly highlights the power of going all in on one goal and also discusses how to best use your time to make progress towards that goal. All right, lesson number nine, attract, don't chase. Whether this be with relationships, money, success, whatever it might be, you want to focus on attracting them into your life, becoming the kind of person that these different things will just gravitate towards. Unfortunately, when you desperately try chase after something, it often eludes you. All right, finishing it off with lesson number 10. Discipline is key. No matter what point of life you're in, 
discipline will always serve you and always be an anchor in creating a better and more fulfilling life. There's only problems that arise when you're at the mercy of fleeting emotions and you don't have control of yourself. You're just the passenger in your own life that when desires and emotions arise, you have no real control in stopping yourself from doing whatever or working towards something when you really don't feel like it. I truly think that discipline is one of the most useful assets in anyone's life. There is an extreme polarity between someone who is a disciplined person and someone who lacks discipline. It doesn't take a genius to realize that without discipline, you're gonna struggle in all domains of life. If you are interested in learning more about discipline, another fantastic book that I recommend is Discipline is Destiny by Ryan Holiday. It's a fantastic book that incorporates lots of stoicism and demonstrates the immense value that living a disciplined life can offer us. So there you have it, 10 lessons that I wish I could have implanted in my 18 year old self, which would have massively fast tracked my progress. But anyway, I hope you've got some value out of this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.